This was one of those episodes that we've wanted to talk about for a long time, and people are surprised that DNews has never covered it before. So welcome to the future. Let's explain abortion. Hello everyone, thanks for watching DNews Today. I'm Trace. A new study in PLOS One says 99% of women who received induced abortions believed it was the right decision, even years later. But even with the near constant prattle on the subject of abortions in the United States, many people are completely unaware of what the procedure entails. Well, no longer. Firstly, the term abortion is actually an umbrella term for a number of different medical procedures, resulting in the termination of a pregnancy in the first 28 weeks. Therapeutic abortion is when a pregnancy is terminated to save the life of the mother. An elective abortion is when someone chooses to terminate for another reason. Abortions can happen naturally as well. These spontaneous abortions are commonly called miscarriage. There are two categories of abortion, medical or clinical, and surgical. Medical uses a drug to terminate the pregnancy, and surgical involves physically clearing the uterus. The most common type of abortion in the United States is the surgical procedure suction curatage. It's commonly used in the first 12 weeks of pregnancy, or the first trimester. It involves the numbing and dilating of the cervix, which is the opening into the uterus, and inserting a pencil-sized plastic tube. The tube is attached to a suction device, and once in place, the fetus, or embryo, if it's earlier than eight weeks, placenta and other uterine contents are evacuated. Occasionally, the doctor must brush the inside wall of the uterus to ensure it's clear. The whole procedure takes 10 to 15 minutes, and it's 100% effective. Afterward, many doctors prescribe painkillers, as the patient will experience pain similar to menstrual cramping. After 16 weeks, all the way up to viability, a different procedure is done, called D and E, or dilation and evacuation. It's different because the cervix must be dilated slightly wider to accommodate the larger mass. As this is the second trimester, the fetus ranges from 6 to 12 inches, depending on the number of weeks pregnant. Once the cervix is dilated, the doctor uses forceps and a light suction device to remove the fetus placental tissue and uterine contents. A study in the American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology found more than 90% of women who have had surgical abortions would recommend it to a friend, but 40% of patients would opt for a medical abortion if a future procedure was required. Medical abortions are non-invasive and use drugs like mifepristone and misoprostol to block the activity of progesterone within the human body. Without progesterone, the lining of the uterus thins until the cells are evacuated naturally, similar to a natural miscarriage. Bleeding usually occurs for a week and a half to a month after taking the drugs, and it is 97% effective. Medical abortions are simple procedures, but are only used in the first 49 days of a pregnancy. The drug is also used to induce labor and as an emergency contraceptive. In 1973, the United States Supreme Court ruled in a landmark decision a woman's choice of abortion falls under the right of privacy under the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. If the fetus can live outside the womb even with medical assistance, however, that it is considered viable and elective abortion is not usually protected under the law. Viability ranges from pregnancy to pregnancy, but it is usually from 22 to 24 weeks in. These abortion procedures don't involve body parts, surgery, or the horrible pictures pro-life activists put on their signs. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists point out abortions have very few side effects or risks for the women. Medical abortions will sometimes not be complete and may require a follow-up visit, but there's no increased risk for breast cancers or future pregnancy complications and no change in fertility. Interestingly, for women with an unplanned pregnancy, there's no difference in risk of depression or other mental health problems between those who have had an abortion and those who choose to have the baby. The first recorded abortion was in 1550 BCE and was recorded in the Ebers Papyrus, medical scrolls used by ancient Egyptians. The ancient Chinese have documentation of it as well, and the Christian church even allowed elective abortions until the mother could feel the fetus moving, which was called the quickening, though that changed in the 18th and 19th centuries. Making these procedures illegal doesn't halt them being performed. In Nigeria, where elective abortion is illegal, fully half as many abortions are performed as in the United States, with a much lower population. But 60% of those are done by untrained, non-physicians, risking the life and health of the woman seeking the procedures. In the end, the study from PLOS One also found, as time goes by, any positive and negative feelings around the procedure will fade. Though again, 99% are happy with their decision. Over time, all memories lose their sharp edge, and it's no different with something as contentious as induced abortion. If you're going to comment, maybe you have already, I hope you watched this whole video, and I hope that you learned something. I'll be down in the comments for a while, so let me know what you think, and thank you so much for watching DNews.